medicine's made easy. Today, I'm going to talk about Antoven's triangle. I would like to start off, so we move on to the augmented limb leads. So augmented limb lead, or what we know as unipolar limb lead, comprise of one positive electrodes and two negative electrodes. So why do we need a two negative electrodes? This is because these two negative electrodes can generate a virtual electrodes in between. And this virtual electrode is very useful, in which this virtual electrode is nearer to the center of the heart, close to the center of the heart. So instead of just put the electrodes directly on the center of the body, such as your abdomen or the thorax, remember I'm talking about the augmented limb leads, not the chest lead. So instead of just directly place on the body, do you realize that in our abdomen, we have a lot of abdominal muscles and the abdominal muscle is quite thick and you also have some... Um, muscles, skeletal muscles on your chest. So that's why we do not want to place the negative electrode directly on these muscles. As I mentioned in my previous slide, that this skeletal muscles activity will affect the electrical recording of our ECG and therefore will affect the result. So augmented limits and coupled with the bipolar limits can give a more accurate result of our ECG a more accurate view of our electrical activities of the heart. So I would like to start off with AVL. So AVL, you will have virtual electrodes generated in between your right arms and your left ankles and a positive electrodes on your left arm. While for AVR, you will have positive electrodes on the right arm and two negative electrodes on the left arms and left leg respectively. So now we move on to AVF. For AVF, you have a positive electrodes on the left ankles and two negative electrodes on the left and right arm. So to remember this augmented limb lead sequence, just remember this mnemonic. Let's rock future. So now we move on to this diagram. So in this diagram, you notice that you will have a mean normal mean QRS axis, which is in between negative 30 degree and plus 110. However, you realize that different limits are placed at different angles in relation to the heart. This imagines that you have a heart at the center of the circle. So how do we determine this angle in relation to the heart? So I will now show you how can we determine this. So we will start off with a reference point on the left with a high emoji. So you will notice that your limb leads one is placed at a horizontal level in relations to the heart. So your limb leads one is referred to as zero degree. So now we move on to limb leads two. While well, limb leads two is placed at plus 60 degree in relations to the heart. How about limb leads three? So let's just shift the limb leads three to the reference point. So you will notice that your angle will be plus 120 degree in relations to the horizontal level in relations to the heart. So next, we move on to the augmented limb lead. So for augmented limb lead, what you need to know is you will first have L, let's, so ADL. So let's just shift the black line to the reference point. So you will notice that AVL is above the zero degree and we define the anti-clockwise rotation as a positive direction. So you are moving in the opposite direction. So this will give you negative 30 degree. So next we move on to AVR. So for AVR, <clears throat> it should be negative 150 degree. Okay, so because we want to place all the limb leads at the right sides of the diagram as shown in previous circle diagram. So that's why we do not use AVR, instead we use negative AVR. So in order to get the value of negative AVR, because this is a straight line that is being extrapolated, you just need to use 180 degree to minus 150 degree to give you plus 30 degree. So for AVF, it is placed at 90 degree in relations to the heart. 
So we move on to mean QR's axis. So what do we mean by mean QR's axis? So mean QR's axis is just simply the net cardiac factor. By means of mean QR's axis, we are referring to the QRS complex. And how we determine the mean QR axis? We look at mean QR's axis by looking at the largest deflections each in the limits. So normally, the QRS complex uh, deflections is largest in limit 2. Why? In normal persons, in limit 2 and its neighboring, ele neighboring uh, electrodes like AVF and negative AVR. So what happens is that because these electrodes are placed at an angle that is closer to the left ventricle and you know that left ventricular muscles are thicker. That's why you have more depolarizations occurring at the left ventricular muscle and therefore you would see a larger deflections of your QRS complex. So this is how we determine the mean QRS axis. So in the normal persons, the mean QRS axis should be in between negative 30 degree to 110 degree. So any value that is less than negative 30 degree and between negative 30 degree to negative 90 degree would be known as left axis deviations. So left axis deviation is a good indicator of left ventricular hypertrophy. Now we move on to the right axis deviation. Right axis deviations would have a value between plus 110 to plus 180 degree. So left axis deviation is a good indicator of left ventricular hypertrophy. Well, for extreme cases, that will be in between negative 90 degree to plus minus 180 degree. That is for extreme axis deviation. So whenever you have hypertrophic muscles, what happens is that the muscles, let's say we talk about left ventricular hypertrophy, so you have more muscles than normal at the left side and therefore as i mentioned you will have more depolarizations and you have a larger qrs complex so in order to determine whether a person have left axis deviations you have to look at the limits electrode which shows the highest deflections for qrs complex so for left axis deviations you will notice that the qrs complex is higher around uh, the avl limit or limit one should be around AVR limits, you will see. So for right axis deviations, uh, you will have a larger deflections complex at limit 3. So these slides will show you the propagations of the wave of depolarization. You will notice that you will have the SA node which generate the action potentials and propagated first to the atria and to the AV nodes and delay for 0.1 seconds at the AV nodes before it propagates into the bundle of his. So after it propagates to the bundle of his, you will have the septal depolarization with left and right bundle branch from the bundle of his. So this septal depolarization is from the left to the right. Why this is so? This is because you will have left septal branch from the left bundle branch. So you do not have right bundle, right septal branch from the right bundle branch and therefore the right septum is dependent or rely on the left septum to be depolarized via the gap junctions. So after the septal depolarization, the action potential, the depolarization wave reach near the apex and moving up, moving up to via the Purkinje fiber. So that's all for me. Thank you. If you like this video, please subscribe for more videos. Thank you.